Hello. I hope you can join me for a little bit of yoga on this Friday. Let's go over to the mat. Okay, you have your yoga mat rolled out in a nice, comfortable spot in your home. Maybe you've made yourself a cup of tea like I have. I keep it close to my mat. And hopefully you have some props like blankets or blocks, maybe a strap either an elastic band, a bell, some kind of a strap, and that you're sitting up on a block or a cushion, a bolster, a pillow, something to lift up your pelvis and give it that nice pelvic tilt so your knees are just slightly lower than your hips, always a good position to be in. So as we get started, first I want to apologize because you might hear some uh, banging and clanging in the background because we are having, uh, my son is installing radiant floor heat in the basement and they're doing that work today. So every now and then you might hear uh, a crash of some sort and it's nothing to be concerned about. Okay, as we come into this yoga practice, I am going to just take a moment to settle us into this space. Hopefully you're in a comfortable seated position. And I have this lovely book of poems of earth and spirit. Uh, in my warrior program, I read from this book at the beginning of the yoga classes, some of the yoga classes. So I would like to do that now. They're beautiful poems by different authors, um, all about staying present in this moment and often rooting us into this earth and bringing us into this mindfulness state as we begin to practice yoga. So this particular poem is called Seven Days. Can you imagine a week without hurrying, a week without deadlines or schedules, without Hearing a ringtone or a car alarm, seeing a freeway or a store, or answering a single text or email. A week of deep, nourishing stillness. Moving slowly and gently, following natural rhythms. A week of being outside to welcome the sunrise and bid good night to the sunset. A week of being still enough to hear the quiet sounds, the sigh of leaves in the breeze, the flutter of birds' wings, the whispers of my own heart, the soft stirrings of poems asking to be born. Oh, in that still moment and keeping all of that great intention for stillness in our life with us at this time, we're going to come into this yoga practice by gently, gently closing our eyes, placing our hands maybe on our thighs or in our lap, just taking that moment to settle into our bodies, Noticing what we're coming to this practice with. Have we been rushing through our day? Feel a little anxious or worried about something? How is our breath at this moment? Short, are you holding it? I invite you now to notice that breath, bring it in through your nostrils, down through the back of your throat, begin to bring it a little deeper into your chest. You can even put your hand on your chest and on that inhale, feel your chest rise with the breath. Pause for a second 
exhale, let the chest fall. Inhale again. Let your body move with the breath. On this inhale, try to bring that breath into your lungs, maybe placing your hands on those ribs and feeling the ribs gently expand with the breath. And on that exhale, the ribs kind of tuck in ever so gently on that exhale. And now on that inhale, I invite you to bring that breath all the way right below your belly button. Place your hands on that lower abdomen. With your inhale, fill the belly with the breath. Let your belly relax and expand with the breath. Pause for a second. And on your exhale, ever so slowly, gently engage those core muscles below that belly button. Push the air out through your lungs, your chest, the back of your throat, and out through your nostrils. This is what I call the three heart breath, bringing it all the way down to that area we like to think of as the solar plexus of the body around that belly button, a chakra energy point of the body. So keep with your own breath with that long exhale down to the belly, each time engaging that core on the exhale. Slow it down on the inhale. Taking that slight pause and ever so slowly, even slower on the exhale. Take three more of these breaths at your own pace. And after your third or fourth breath, you can just begin to gently open your eyes. You don't want to lose this lengthened breath through our practice. Some of you have been practicing the yoga with me in my Wise Women Warrior program. You can always find that, the link below on Circle So. If this is your first experience in a yoga class with me, I invite you to always follow your breath. Think about the movement of the asana practice that we do on your exhale. Move on your exhale. So the breath ties in with the movement and helps us uh, engage our yoga practice as a meditation practice, unifying that breath with the movement, the mind, body, and spirit, the yoking together of all three parts of our body. So with your next inhale, begin to bring those hands to the side, stretching those fingertips. Engage those fingers, maybe wiggle them a little bit. With your exhale, bring those arms overhead, bring the palms of the hands together in prayer pose. And then pausing and inhaling at the top. Exhale those arms back down. Roll those shoulders back and down, bringing those shoulder blades slightly together. Stretch out those fingers. Inhale at the bottom. Exhale the arms overhead, maybe gazing up at your fingertips if it's not pinching the back of your neck. Inhale at the top. And then exhale those arms back down again. Take a sip of tea here. Okay. 
begin our side stretch where we bring those right fingertips down next to us onto the mat. Left arm by left ear. We're gonna walk those right fingertips out, keeping that left hip on your cushion, okay? So it's not lifting up. Walk those right fingertips out, getting a good stretch, left side of the body. Notice that you're still lengthening that spine as you're stretching over, keeping that left arm by left ear. Let your body move with the breath. Each exhale may draw you a little deeper into that stretch. Inhale here, exhale, begin to bring those left fingertips down to the mat, right arm by right ear, lengthen that spine, lengthen that arm, walk those left fingertips out, keeping that right hip on your cushion, on your pillow, on your block, whatever you're sitting on, and breathe. Taking a deep inhale, exhale, bring that arm back down. Very good. To get a nice little stretch in our neck, we're going to bring our attention, bring the right ear to the right shoulder. It's not going to touch. You're going to feel that stretch in the left side of your neck. Breathe here. Waken, wakens up that vagus nerve, calms us a little bit, centers us. Inhale, exhale, gently, slowly move that neck, that head back in place. Now the left ear to the left shoulder, move very slowly on the exhale. That stretch in the right side of the neck. And with your exhale, slowly bring that head back up. We're going to do a, uh, a twist. And in our twist, we want to be sure to keep our buttocks, our sit bones on your cushion or on your block, whatever you're sitting on, we're going to pay attention and just bring that belly button towards that right thigh first, okay? Towards the right thigh. Right hand can come behind us, fingertips touching. Now pay attention that you're not collapsing, okay? That you're rising up, stacking the vertebrae of the spine, crown of the head up to the sky, then take that left hand on your right thigh, can be on the outside of that right thigh if it feels okay. Deep inhale. On your exhale, push yourself into this twist to the right. Keep those sit bones on your cushion. Lengthen, lengthen that spine and breathe here. Maybe take your gaze over that right shoulder. You'll notice the breath feels different in a twist. All those internal organs are getting a good massage. Take an inhale here. On your exhale, slowly untwist. The thing we notice in yoga, I always notice, is that uh, as we're waking up, our body, our internal organs, like with that twist, I always hear this gurgling in my stomach, perfectly normal. Um, I'll just say that it's also perfectly normal if you're in a yoga class to be passing gas and to uh, be waking up 
all those all those joints and all those organs internally, especially your digestive organs and your uh, colon and everything gets um, awakened. And so don't be embarrassed by that, especially if you're doing virtual yoga, you're probably in the privacy of your own home. So just let your body do its natural uh, sounds and uh, systems working. So now we're gonna bring that belly button towards that left thigh, left fingertips behind us, back those vertebrae, right hand on left thigh, Deep inhale here, exhale, push yourself into this twist to the other side, to the left. Maybe gaze over that left shoulder. Deep inhale, exhale, slowly untwist. Very good. Okay, so we are now going to come into one of my favorite poses. Consider a resting pose. It's called child's pose, Balasana. And in child's pose, when we start, I recommend that you have your knees in a V. So you're kind of like this. Your heels can be touching. Go back on my mat this way. And uh, because when we start out our practice, you know, we have to warm up our body. And you'll notice over the course of 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, that uh, some of the stretches become a little bit easier. So in child's pose, we want to sit back, drop our hips, and lengthen our arms. Lengthen our arms so that we're gluing those fingertips down to the mat. You might even want to glue the fingertips down and raise up the palms, which fires up all those muscles, tiny, tiny muscles in your hands, your wrists, and then you can place them down. You want to Place your forehead down on the mat. Breathe. So now you're bringing that breath through your upper back, lower, middle back, lower back. You can probably see why this is a resting pose. You can stay, stay in child's pose for a moment while I just say this. Um, whenever we're moving through our yoga practice, and if you're a little bit out of breath or you're a little tight, come back into Balasana, into Child's Pose, and just stretch out and relax. It's usually very comforting. The other thing that I'm not doing right now is giving any kind of adjustments to these poses. Um, you can always email me, your encore performance at gmail.com. Contact me on the Circle Sew site um, and I can advise you. Like if your knees, you have trouble with your knees or your hips, wrist problems, I can give you some adjustments for those. So today we're just going to keep moving through, but whatever support you need, please contact me. I'm more than happy to help. So from the last enough, we're going to now come up. And we're going to come to this tabletop position. And in tabletop, we talk about having a neutral spine. And what that means is you keep that little uh, lumbar curve at the bottom of your spine and also the cervical uh, curve. That's what's considered neutral. You try to keep your wrist uh, right below your elbows and your shoulders, knees uh, right below the hips. Just notice your position. You can fold your toes down. Sometimes I curl them under. And to wake up the spine, we're gonna do the cat-cow. And uh, you might be familiar with this. 
And remember that we're taking that breath to the belly. So let's start with cat. On your exhale, curl the spine into a C, engage that core muscle of your belly. Breathe here, a couple breaths. On your exhale, drop that belly like a cow in the fields and look up ever so gently. Don't pinch your neck and breathe. Now follow your breath. Do about three or four rounds of cat-cow at your own pace. So move on the exhale. And then just come back to that neutral spine. And before we wake up our legs, I want you just to wake up those hips and circle them, do a big circle. Go one way. <coughs> big circles. Then go the opposite way. Try to always balance our body both sides of our body. Then come back to that tabletop, <clears throat> neutral spine, take that right foot, curl those toes under, stretch that leg in the back of you and curl those toes under on the mat and rock back and forth on those toes. This is where I often hear my toes and my ankle wake up and start popping a little bit. You might hear the same thing, that's fine. And then for a balance, we're just gonna pause, flex that right foot, raise it a couple of inches off the mat. You're gonna be firing up all those muscles of that leg. And if you wanna take the balance, Take that left arm by left ear, the right leg, left arm. Don't use the same side of your body, you'll fall over. Exhale that hand down, knee down. Come back for a moment in child's pose. Lengthen out those arms, sit back, have your knees together if that feels okay at this point. Back up, tabletop, take that left foot and curl those toes, rock on those toes, wake up that left leg. I hear my ankle popping on this side. And then you can pause, flex that foot, raise it a couple inches off the mat. You're engaging that glute, all those muscles, and then take the right arm by right ear, left leg, right arm. Exhale that hand down. And knee down, sit back in Velocina, stretch out those arms. And then just sit up. This is a uh, considered hero's pose. And in hero's pose, sometimes we even have um, you can have a block that you're sitting on. You know, as an adjustment, something under your knees. Okay, now 
going to wake up those arms a little bit more. I think I'm going to turn my back to the camera. Hope you can hear me. Okay, so we're going to wake up these arms by bringing those hands together. Okay, and basically we're going to be rolling the shoulder blades together, shoulders down, and open. It's going to open up our chest. If you have trouble bringing your hands together, you can use that strap and do the same thing. One hand on each side of the strap. Okay, so roll the shoulder blades together. Open that chest. Oh, wake up those shoulders. If it feels okay, you can open up that throat chakra and breathe. with your exhale, just shake out their shoulders, maybe roll them each way a couple times. Oh, I love that pose. That's not something to do every single day, you know, even a couple times in the course of your day, just open up, especially so many of us sit at computers and uh, maybe even in cars or something, you know, we start to slouch over, the shoulders start folding in. So we want to be very mindful and remember to give space to those vertebrae, stacking those vertebrae, the spine and your uh, posture improves. Those are all the benefits of yoga besides that stillness that we also talked about. Okay, now before we go into what is another very popular asana movement, the Adha Svanasana, downward facing dog, we're going to wake up those toes. We sometimes forget about our fingers and our toes, so I invite you to curl those toes under and sit back on them. Okay, now this is going to probably feel uncomfortable to most people. Um, this is something else I practice every single day. I'm happy to say at 67 and a half years old, I haven't had any corns or anything on my feet yet. It's good to separate those toes a little bit, give them some room to breathe. It can be very painful, but great exercise. Okay, so just keep breathing here, a couple more breaths. Okay, so just sit back. You might want to just shake out those feet a little bit. Okay, now in downward facing dog, we are going to start in the child's pose first. And in downward facing dog is an inversion. Okay, so again, if you have any issues that you need some support around adjustments, please write to me. I'm happy to let you know. Um, and certainly uh, any high blood pressure, low blood pressure, if you're feeling dizzy, you come out of it because it is an inversion. Your head's gonna be below your heart. Um, and also uh, it's, um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> it's an inversion. I know, it's, a, it's also considered a resting pose, um, which some people find crazy, but once you go into it, and if you have a daily practice of downward facing dog, it will become more of a resting pose. You'll just kind of like melt into it. So we're starting in that Velasana, and I suggest you keep the uh, knees at least hip width apart, stretch out those hands, begin to curl the toes under, and then exhale, raise the hips up to the sky. Heels come closer to the mat. You can keep a bend in your knees, that's fine. You wanna kind of swivel these thighs inward, inward, and bring that tailbone up to the sky. Breathe, three-part breath into the core. 
separate their shoulders. Don't let them tighten and scrunch near your ears. A few breaths here, just holding into this pose, pushing the energy out through your heels and out through your fingertips, creating that V. You can begin to bicycle those feet, like bend one knee, bend the other knee, bring the opposite heel to the mat like you're walking or bicycling. And then with your next exhale, begin to just walk to the front of the mat and hang with your knees bent. Okay, so your chest is on your thighs. Now I want you to relax your neck Relax your shoulders, let your shoulder blades separate. <clears throat> Take another deep breath. And we're gonna just gently roll up to standing. One vertebrae at a time. Unfolding to standing. Okay. Let's talk about standing face this way. In standing, which is called Tadasana, you want the feet hip-width apart, so you don't want to be too far. You don't want to be together, hip-width apart. And often our hips are not that far apart, so it's not going to be too wide. I want you to just imagine your spine lengthening, creating space between those vertebrae, keeping the natural curves in the spine, and then open those palms to the side, roll the shoulders back and down, opening up the heart, opening up the chest. Pay attention that your chin, if you're not head, is not tilted up or down. Chin is parallel to the mat. This is mountain pose. And this is a pose too you can practice every day. It can be a very challenging pose to really be mindful of how you're standing. Because so often we end up, especially as women, we end up on one hip, you know, one, like especially carrying a baby, carrying groceries. So standing with both feet grounded, centered on the earth to balance us and give us that stability. I'm going to turn back to the side now. Because in, in this Tadasana, the standing pose, we are going to roll the shoulders back and down again like we did seated, stretching out those fingers and Exhale the arms overhead, pause and lengthen that spine, lengthen those arms. Inhale, exhale the arms back down again. Inhale at the bottom. Exhale the arms up. If you want to lengthen that spine and just take a slight back bend here, you can. You don't have to go far. Begin to stretch out the front of the body. And then exhale those arms down. Inhale. Exhale the arms up. This time we're going to dive down like we're swimming, okay? As we dive down, we want to lengthen that spine out for a moment. So just, you might wanna watch me. So inhale, exhale, dive down. You're lengthening, lengthening the spine. Just a little gentle bend in the knees. Lengthen that spine and then bend those knees and fold over just like you did before. Chest on the thighs, relax the neck. You might want to grab your big toes.
Inhale and place those hands onto the mat. We're gonna take that right foot behind us into a lunge. Now in a lunge, this is actually a high lunge. I'm gonna invite you to come down on your knee for a low lunge first. And again, you might need a blanket under your knee. So in that low lunge, that right knee is gonna be on the mat. The left knee should be over that left ankle. Breathe those hands out to the side. Exhale, the arms overhead. If you want a little bit of a balance, you can take a back bend here. And if you take that back bend, squeeze that right glute, okay? And get, open up that heart, open up the front of the body. Breathe here. And exhale the arms back down. We're going to place our hands down. Bring that left foot back to meet the right into child's pose. From child's pose, curl those toes under, raise those hips up, downward facing jog. Breathe here, you can walk. One heel to the mat or bicycle. Stretching out those calves. Tailbone up to the sky. Your next exhale, walk to the front of the mat. Bend those knees, rest chest on thighs. Relax the neck, relax the face. Maybe grab those elbows. Maybe swing a little bit back and forth. Releasing that lower back. And then slowly on your exhale, rise up, uncurling that spine to Tadasana. Take the breath all the way to the core. Inhale, stretch out those fingers. Exhale, the arms overhead. Pause and lengthen that spine. And exhale, those arms down. Inhale. Exhale, the arms overhead, lengthen the spine. Maybe take a back bend, opening up the front of the body. Exhale the arms back down. This time we're going to rise the arms up and then swim down. So exhale the arms up, inhale at the top, and then exhale, dive down, lengthen that Fine, flatten that back, and then bend those knees, rest the chest on the sides, relax the neck, maybe grab those big toes again. Inhale, place the hands on the mat, take that left foot back into first a high lunge, Engage the muscles of that left leg and then slowly bring that left knee down and come up, what we say, squaring off those hips. Make sure that right ankle is under that right knee. Exhale the arms up. If you want to take a balance, you squeeze that left glute, come into a little back bend. Exhale the arms back, bring the hands down, bring that right foot to meet the left foot into Velasana. Take a little rest. We're going to run through that same sequence again. 
which we call a, a little vinyasa. It's just a very short vinyasa. So we do the same thing again. So um, I'll talk a little bit less. I'll still give you some prompts, but uh, you know, this is a way to kind of memorize that flow, that vinyasa flow. From child's pose, curl toes under, lift the hips, downward facing dog. Exhale, walk to the front, bend those knees. Rise up slowly. Inhale with your hands stretched out. Exhale, arms overhead, lengthen. Exhale, the arms down. Inhale at the bottom. Exhale, lengthen, back bend. Exhale, arms down. Inhale. Exhale, arms up and then dive down. Bend the knees. Right foot back. Low lunge. Exhale. Arms overhead, lengthen that spine, come into a back bend. Exhale the arms down, child's pose. Curl the toes, lift the hips. Walk to the front of the mat. Rise up, uncurling the spine. Exhale the arms overhead, lengthen your spine. Exhale it back down. Inhale. Exhale, back bend. Arms down. Exhale the arms up. This time dive down, lengthen the spine. Bend those knees. Left foot back, low lunge. Exhale the arms up, slide back down. And arms down and back to child's pose. Okay, right, it's a little vinyasa flow. You can repeat that several times in a row. Also, it's the faster you go, of course, it's more, I would say, cardiovascular. You'll be heating up your muscles, of course. Um, the longer you hold with the breath in certain poses, uh, the more it helps relax some of the connective tissue and kind of de-stress some of those muscles. So you have different choices there. So we're gonna stand and come into a balance before we go to our backs. 
and I'm going to take a sip of tea. <laughs> Okay. So this balance is called tree pose. Let me try to center myself in the middle of this window in back of me. So the thing about a balance is, um, especially if you're like a little um, wobbly, have a chair next to you or have a wall next to you uh, so that you can hold on. Perfectly okay to hold on. As you practice balances, you will become um, you know, a little bit more confident and uh, grounded and stable. So, and it's perfectly okay. I've been practicing a long time and sometimes I fall over. So uh, it's perfectly okay if you lose your balance a little bit. One way to secure that stability is by gazing. Take your gaze, which we call a drifty, a drifty, Bring that drifty on something in front of you that's not moving. Okay, so if you're looking out of a window and the trees are moving or cars are going by, not a good thing. Uh, I'm staring at one of my paintings on the wall across the room and that's not moving. Uh, so anything that's not moving. So first thing we wanna do in tree pose is to plant both feet onto the mat onto the floor. <clears throat> and balances are also easier to do, by the way, if you're on a wooden floor or maybe like possibly tile or linoleum, carpet is a little hard, harder for a balance. Um, so both feet are planted. Now just check in with your body into that Tadasana pose, that mountain pose. Make sure that your spine is stacked, the crown of your head up to the sky. Shoulders are gently rolled back and down. Now just bring your drifty to something not moving and your focus on rooting that left foot down and bring the right foot in front of you, toes kind of touching. On your exhale, raise those toes up. We're gonna open that hip by bringing that right knee slightly to the side, opening up that hip and bring that foot to your ankle or it can be up to your thigh. I'm probably gonna bring it to my ankle today, which is perfectly fine. Breathe here. You can bring your hands into prayer pose in front of your heart. If you've done this before, you might want to bring your hands overhead, wiggle those fingers like branches of the tree or bring the hands together. Breathing. And when it feels right. Take that foot off, shake it out, Keep walk it out. You've been standing on that left foot. Come back to Tadasana. Bring your attention to that right foot, planting it down to the mat, to the earth. Dristy on something not moving. On your exhale, begin to move those left toes in front of you. Touch the floor. On your next exhale, maybe raise them off the floor. Open that hip. Maybe bring that foot, uh, left foot to your right ankle or to the right thigh. Maybe bring those hands in front of your heart. Open them up to the sky, all those little branches waving in the wind, or hands together. The next exhale, you can begin to take that foot off and walk it out. Always good 
the practice of balance. Okay, so we are going to come to our backs on the mat and do a little bit of work on our back before we go into the Savasana, the last piece of our program. So come down to your mat to a seated position first. And I always invite students to kind of roll back slowly. Okay, so you can even hold behind your thighs, engage that core on the exhale, engage, and then slowly roll back, curling that spine all the way back. Hopefully, if you need to see me, you can see me okay. Okay. <clears throat> So now we're just gonna hug those knees into the chest first. And this helps to relax our lower back. If it's been tense in some of those poses and you can rock, if it feels okay, rock on the lower back. And then as a hip opener again, I invite you to uh, bend those knees. If you can grab the inside of your feet, this is a happy baby pose. It's really good for opening up those hips, the thighs, and you can rock in this. And if you can't grab your feet, you can probably, you could do your shins, you could do your ankles, some way of opening up those hips, rocking, relaxing that lower back and breathing. Now we're going to flex that left foot and bring that left leg all the way to the mat and hug that right knee into our chest, flexing both feet, flex the right foot too. We're going to take the strap, it can be a scarf, it can be a belt, over the ball of that right foot and then just bring that uh, right foot to the sky and just on the exhale, pull down on the strap. So when you pull down, you're going to feel all those muscles. I feel it in the quads. I feel it in my shin and my calves. They all just engage, pulling down on that foot. It also brings that leg right into the hip socket before we start to move it. And then on your exhale, just pull that strap closer to you. It might just be another inch or two. Keep a bend in that knee, that right knee. Breath all the way down to the belly, even though you're laying on your back, bring it down to your belly. Take that strap in your right hand. On your exhale, you're going to open now, open that leg to the right. Take your left hand, put it down on that left hip so it doesn't rise up off the mat. The right foot is not going to go to the floor. That's okay. Keep both feet flexed. Keep that, by flexing that left foot, it's engaging all those muscles of that left leg too, as well as the right. On your exhale, bring that leg up. Take the strap in the left hand. Exhale, bring that right leg slightly over to the left. Flexing that foot. Exhale, bring that foot back, take the strap off. So bend that left knee. This is called figure four. It can also a hip opener. It might be a little intense. You're gonna take that right ankle on that left thigh. If you wanna take that left foot and bring it down to the mat, it's perfectly fine. You can open the hip uh, with it down on the mat. 
if you've done this before, you can grab under that left thigh. On the exhale, pull that thigh closer and push the right thigh away with the right elbow. You'll feel this on the outside of that hip, the outside of the thigh, the inner thigh. Really good stretch. Now slowly just bring that foot down and uh, you can take that right ankle, right leg, cross it over the left leg. We're going to do a little bit of a twist. Bring the hips about an inch to the left. Stretch out your arms like airplane wings on the mat. And on your exhale, you're going to drop those knees to the right. They're not going to go to the floor. That's okay. And you're going to take your gaze to the left. Okay, opposite. So on your exhale, drop the knees to the right and look to the left. Now this, you should be feeling in your left hip, your left waist, all the way to under your armpit. Slowly exhale, bring the knees up, uncross those legs. You wanna take that right foot, Flex it, bring that right leg down, and then hug that left knee into the chest. Flex both feet. This keeps that right leg as active as the left leg. A strap over the ball of the left foot, raising that left foot to the sky. Deep inhale, exhale, pull down on that strap, feel all those muscles wake up. With your next exhale, pull that strap closer to you, bring that foot closer. It doesn't have to come that close. I'm keeping a bend in that knee. Keep that right foot flexed. On your exhale, take that strap in the left hand, open that left leg to the left. Keep that right hand on that right hip so it doesn't come off the mat. Feel that on the inner thigh. Inhale here, exhale, bring that leg up, take the strap in the right hand, take the inhale, exhale, bring that left leg slightly to the right. You might feel that stretch way down in your groin, all those tiny little muscles. And exhale, bring that foot back, take the strap off, bend that right knee, take the left ankle to the right thigh, keep that right foot planted on your mat and just begin to push. With the exhale, push that left thigh away, or you can grab under that right thigh. On the exhale, pull that right thigh closer, push the left thigh away with the left elbow, Keep the feet flexed. Breathing. And Exhale, bring that right foot down, cross the left leg over the right, bring the hips about an inch to the right, 
stretch out those arms. We're bringing the knees to come to the left and our gaze to the right. Inhale, exhale, drop the knees to the left and look to the right. Your next exhale, bring those knees back, uncross the legs, shift the hips back to center. And then if you want to just windshield wiper the knees back and forth, relaxing that lower back again. So we're moving into this lovely uh, part of our practice at the very end called Savasana. Um, I always invite you to take a good stretch before we get into Savasana. So stretch out your legs, arms overhead, point the toes and stretch your body like somebody's pulling your toes and pulling your hands and then squeeze your glutes, all the muscles of your face and then release. That one more time, point those toes, stretch those fingertips. Squeeze the glutes, squeeze the thighs, squeeze all the muscles of the face, and then release. Great way to just let go of tension through the course of the day. Really a good idea. Now, moving into Savasana, this is what I'm going to uh, suggest. I have blankets nearby when I'm in Savasana, and um, I often roll my blanket up and put it under my knees. Now in Savasana is, uh, I'm gonna just give you some prompts. It's a time when we go inside after our practice, a very short three, four minute meditation, just a quiet, quiet time. Okay, kind of a, a nice way to end all of our movement. So I keep the blanket under my knees just because it helps release my lower back a little bit more. I also tend to take off my glasses. If you have an, um, an, an eye bag, um, I, I used to have one that was scented with lavender. I loved it. Uh, you can always put that on. Um, anything to help you relax. If, if, in winter time, if your space is cold, you can put a blanket over you, or sometimes the pressure of a blanket too is very nice. And I just roll back. Now, I, I'll be showing you in my Wise Women Warrior program, we do a bit of, quite a bit of restorative yoga. And I show you different ways of going into Savasana. This is a pretty traditional Savasana where our legs are separated, the feet are pointed out, and then we bring our hands, typically like palms to, to the sky, relax the wrist, and then I try to tuck each shoulder blade a little bit under my body. And then just notice any part of your body that might still be holding tension. Just intentionally bring, you can either tighten that muscle where you're holding tension and release it, or you can just bring your attention to it Try to let go. Try to let go of any tightness around your face or your temples or the neck. And we also let go of that deep belly breath. Let's come back to a regular soft breath. I'll just take a few minutes here in Savasana and I will chime my singing bowl when our few minutes is up.
We don't want to rush coming out of Savasana. We move very slowly. I want to take another stretch. Head. That's good. On your back, you want to roll to your side. You don't want to rise up too quickly. Pause. And push yourself up with your hands. When you sit on a block. as mindfully out of Savasana as you like. And I always end my classes with a universal sound of OM so you can join me. Oh. Thank you for joining me in this yoga practice. I'll be posting more videos of yoga to my channel. I hope you subscribe. I hope you follow me. And as always, good to yourself every single day. Namaste.